anybody. I don't see the chat anymore. Hey everybody, we are going live. I see three people on and you're going to have to copy and paste that same link into this one that was in your other one, other message. You have to go in the other one and copy it and bring it over into this one. No, so that you can put that in the message so everybody can click on it. Hey everybody. Um, let me send you a link in this in this group really quickly we have a new way of working things tonight um so let me get this for you where's the live for tonight there it is um okay so it is I am creating a link for y'all and it is, let's see, now I don't know where the live, oh, invite members to the group, done. I added a link to this description and if you can see it, um, otherwise, let me read what that says, E, hold on, I can't see that. E65 BE4. So that's E65 BE4. Okay, I know I just jumped right up in the screen. <laughs> okay, so what I've done is um, in the chat, or yes, in the chat, I have sent you a link that because this is new software so that I can actually look at this overhead picture in picture and back to me so we're stepping it up here but in the chat I sent you a pic or a link that um, if you click on the link it will ask you to let Ecamm um, allow access you say yes and then say, go back to the broadcast. And then after you say yes to that, in the upper left-hand corner, there's an X. Click the X and it'll put you right back in here. But what that will do is allow me in the chat to see your name instead of it just saying Facebook user one, Facebook user two. Um, so let me know if you have done that. So if you click the link, oh, I'm there. Let's see. So why am I not seeing the links here or the chats? Let me see. Well, now I'm not seeing any chats in here. Mm -mm. I'm not seeing them at all now. I did. I see them in here. Hey, Nancy. Hey, oh, and Nancy and Nancy and Gail. We've got all kinds of you. Okay, so why I'm not seeing them. I was seeing them a minute ago. And now I'm not seeing comments at all. Oh, I know why. Duh. Okay, so I can see that Jen and Bettina clicked on the link because I see their names. It is in, it's in a comment close to the top. So um, I'm pinning the comment, should be pinning it to the top. And this will be a one-time thing. If you um, click that link so that I can see your name, then it'll always be there. Sylvia, yes, it worked. I see you. Um, so somebody's asking me to repeat the instructions. So what you do is you click on the link. Hey, Deanne. Click on the link. 
It will take you out and say Ecamm needs access. Click yes. Then it'll say, do you want to go back to the broadcast? Click yes. And then when you get back, there's an X in the upper left-hand corner. Click that and you'll be back here with me. And it's a one-time thing. And then what that does right now in my comments, um, I see Facebook user and that's it. I see Facebook user said, hola. I see Facebook user said, just logged on, but missed what you said. I see Facebook user, hello. I see Facebook user, I can't get into the website, Ecamm. The, you don't need to get into the website. You just click the link and allow it to have access and then go back to the broadcast. And then, like I said, this simply gives me your name in the chat. And if you've noticed, other than that one minute when I had to go read those itty bitty letters, I can actually see the chat and I'm not glaring at the screen. So we got this all set up. It's really, really good. So Facebook user says, hello, hello. Um, and I say, hello, hello, go click the link so I can see who you are. I see Eddie Halls or Halls Eddie um, and Peggy Byler and Rachel. Yep, it did work, Rachel. So this is gonna be the new format where you'll click Yes, I saw that. I read that. So, uh, but I couldn't see it was Nancy. So, um, here, let me do this. So, I will add you to the broadcast. Oh, whoops. I don't want to do that. Let me unadd you to the broadcast. Um, whoops, whoops, whoops. That's probably not what I wanted to do. There we go. We got you off. So, uh, Karen Johnson, yes, I see you. Nina, I see you. Hello, Peggy Byler. Oh, this is so fun because Deanne, it's Deanne. Can you see me? Yes, ma'am. Deanne, I can. Vicki, I can. This is so exciting because now I can see you. You got it, Vicki. I see you. I see a big old chat window and um, I see the screen and um, Facebook user, I am here or am I here? You are here, but not with a name. So try clicking that link one more time. Um, Sharon Okerlin, I see you. Mary, I see you. Cindy, I see you. Um, we're going to spend a little time up front getting this figured out so that you will then know Facebook user that said, did it work? No, um, I don't see a name. So click the link. Oh, Diane. Okay. So I can't see your name, but but they can. So click the link and say yes to allow um, Ecamm to uh, access you. Joe Bot, I see you. Hey, Joe. Um, Belinda, I see you as well. Barb, I see you're here. Um, again, so excited. We've got this whole new setup. I no longer have to drag my camera back and forth and make you dizzy. I will simply click the overhead. You will see what I'm doing. Um, in addition, you will see me while I'm doing that in the window, the window. Now it's backwards for me on my screen. So I tend to point the wrong direction, but um, this is cool. This will make it easier. So again, it may be a little confusing tonight, but this is the first time we're doing this and this is how we're going to do it from here on out. So spend a little time and um, with it and um, it'll be great. Yes, once you're in it, Cindy, two for one, woohoo. Um, yes, so um, I've been recording my classes with this and, and I look in the screen at me, but have you ever tried to like, Put a safety pin on looking in the mirror and it's backwards so i always point at the wind wait point at where i'm going to be but i'm pointing over here so it's been really fun holly you're here welcome cookie you're here um i see you all and if if somebody asks a really cool question i can actually click on you and it will put your name right wait oh come on sharon figure this out right there it'll put your name right there with the comment so everybody can see it so facebook users saying sorry not getting it i'm not okay 
Um, Diane, so I put a link up in the, the chat earlier. It should say, um, Chris Campbell, Barbara Smith, I do see you, Sydney, I see you, Sue, I see you. Um, when you click that link, it should take you out and to a little window that says, um, allow Ecamm access. You click yes. And then um, once you click yes, it will take you to, I think, one more page that you click yes, and then it'll take you back to the window and in the upper left-hand corner, which would be that corner, the upper left-hand corner, there will be an X. Click that X and it will put you right back on this page. And um, am I on Ecamm Live? Facebook user, I'm not seeing your name. I keep... Nancy Butterball. No, okay, Nancy Butterball. And I keep text the link, but it will not let me in. You should... Okay. So you should press that link and it should um, do that. Now, if it's not working, Leslie Bauer, yes, I see you. If it's not working, what we can do is simply, if you have saw a question or you wanna put in a comment, just put your name in front of the comment and I will know who it is to address the question that way. And uh, that will work. Um, I see Mary Lynn. I see somebody says it's hi from very hot Ohio. Joe says my computer's being weird. Did I make it back in? Yes, Joe, you did. Hi, Bunny. I see you now. Um, Peggy Jones, I do not see you. Uh, oh, oh, okay. So you are Peggy from Pittsburgh. So I see that, but your Facebook user is not um, putting your name in. So apparently that link wasn't clicked, um, but that's okay because what you can do, like I said, is you, if you have a comment, um, yes. Okay. Do I need to add the link again? Okay. Let me, whoops. Let me add this again. So that it's, uh, well, I actually have the comment pinned up above. So it's not, um, it won't let me copy it. So let me do this. When I click that link, it takes me out to this screen that says Ecamm. And right, oh, I, I told you a story. Right down here, it says continue with Facebook. That's what you click, continue with Facebook. I apologize. So click the link, then click continue with Facebook. When you continue with Facebook, it says, hello, your name, you're connected. Then you click this little X at the top. and it brings you back into the broadcast. If it's an Android, you have to click in the upper right hand corner. Oh, good to know. So if it's an Android, um, click in the, the upper right. And somebody just told me that the link is above my broadcast, so you can click it there. I can't see that from this screen ahead. Diana, you're here. Susan, you're here. Um, Jen, thank you that it's in the description, in the live description. I don't see that from my computer. So, other than this is all new, a whole new format, and you know, once you once you get that, you'll you know it'll be easy. Um, Diana, you're here. It'll be easy. Hey, Leslie, from here on out. But it will be so worth it. Do you, um, oh, okay, so I haven't seen Kristen click the link and put her name in or Michael Nagy yet, but I will tell you, and I also can't even, oh, there's Kristen. Everybody say hi to my sweet little daughter, Kristen Hoppy. Um, so 
Nancy Jean, yes, you're in now. Woohoo! Jean Ward, you are in. So, everybody's getting in. What a way to go. I am so excited. Let's see. Michael, you're watching me from the airplane. We are high in the sky. Okay, let's give you. That's to Michael in the sky. Hey, Holly. Oh, she's saying hi to Kristen. Okay, so we're so excited with this new format. What we're going to do tonight, I showed you last week. Whoa, come back there. I showed you last week when we did the sunflower stencils, I kind of held this one up and everyone's like, I want that one, I want that one. Um, so we are gonna do this. Oops, see, I still gotta get used to this as well. Where am I? Oh, I think I just wanna stay right here. Um, so what we're gonna do is this stencil. Now, I will tell you, hey, April, you're in. Neil, or Liz, you're in. Um, I will tell you that when you use these, they could be as simple as you want them and beautiful, or you can get a super complex. And um, tonight, because we're spending time getting this whole software running, hey, April, hey, Gail, hey, Peggy. Oh, Peggy, you're in. You're in. Um, because we're spending time getting this going, and this is my first time broadcasting, hey Chandra, um, with this software, and I'm still figuring out where things are as well, we're gonna do this very simple. Um, and I better get on it to get my base blaze. Let me do that. So let's do this. Um, I am going to move things around so that, Oops, slide this over. Now, instead of me making you dizzy, I'm simply going to do this. Oh, well, let me, <laughs> let me move my keyboard out of the way because I really don't need that. And let me get this all set up where we want it. And I'm going to bounce into the corner. Yep, into the corner. And forgive me, I am um, simply getting all my settings so that it's not too bright and all of this stuff, getting it set up as well. And so what we're gonna do again is very simple. I'm just gonna put um, a, a foundation glaze down, but first let's talk about this. My clay that I am using is Laguna BMX 5. You can use any clay you want. Um, I do roll my clay out at about a quarter of an inch thickness um, and, and um, I go just a little heavier or a little thicker if I'm going to, hey Penny, if I am going to, um, Shirley you're in, um, Barb you're in, oh you thought I was going to use my keyboard for texture, oh well that would be a great idea but I'd probably have to replace my keyboard after that. Oh, there's an echo. Oh, you know what? Let me do this. How bad is the echo? Um, there was a place that I could fix that, and I didn't remember where that was. Recording, output, options. How bad is the echo? I do not remember where that feature was, but I will certainly find it, but I may not find it at this precise moment. Um, yeah, I can't find it at this. How bad is, do you hear an echo? I can turn the volume down because I even switched my this big old mic um let me just turn the volume down some there is a echo reducer it's on the software and i don't remember where, where it is but i'll find it okay so um what i'm gonna do is compress my clay 
I just get everything all locked in here, all these little particles. Oh, no echo. Okay, I probably um, had it too loud or um, you may have been logged in to Facebook twice. Okay, so I'm just going to compress this and again, get all the particles in the universe aligned, flip it over and compress the other side. Again, it's about a quarter inch thick. If I was going to use texture, I would, um, I would make it a little thicker just because I would be squishing it. That's my technical term, squishing it. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, um, my needle tool and I'm just gonna come kind of around the edge and get rid of that excess clay so that I'm not knocking my stuff sideways. And come around this edge. Now I have a that U-bolt tool, which actually I should have grabbed. It works better. I don't know how many of you have seen this, but this is just a U-bolt. You get these at the hardware store for like three dollars. They have the little nuts on them. We we wrap a wire on that. And what I do then is I will just grab it and run this around. And that will get rid of that excess clay super easy. Um, that works really, really well and very inexpensive at the hardware store. Okay. Um, after you got in with Ecamm, you had to close one of the Facebook pages. So, Luann, you may need to close if you have an extra Facebook page open. Um, you may need to close that because I think most people have now gotten rid of the echo. So close the Facebook tab. Uh, when you when you log into Ecamm from Facebook, there's a double playing. Yes, you need to close the one of the Facebook tabs. And uh, you know, again, I do apologize. This is a new concept for all of us, but. Um, it will be so worth it. I need to put my camera higher next time so that I have um, more space for you to see. I want to show you. No, they didn't. So I want to show you this stencil. And what I'm going to do tonight is I'm actually going to use it um, with... I'm actually going to use it with my happy flower template. I love this template because, oops, see, I write what it is all on the back. So I remember it's my 12 inch happy flower. I would use it with an eight inch push. If you use the push plate, I would use it with a nine and a half inch GR pottery form. If I had GR pottery forms, um, or a nine and a half inch, one of my forms. And I use it with the eight inch deep dish, the three level. So I write on mine so that I can always, in the beginning, remember what I needed to do. Um, so that might be helpful. Well, Joe, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, yes, sir, you will see that by morning, I promise you, for both phases. Um, thank you for joining. Okay, so I, do, I am gonna use this. Now this, this stencil could be used on pretty much any round, but I love, the way it fits on the happy flower. And I think a lot of you already have this. It is very classy and works for a lot of things. And it actually even has a matching form, which is a beauty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put my template on here and brown side down, because the brown side doesn't stick to the clay. The black side, will we'll hold the clay a little longer, but it's not wrong. It will just take a little, while, little longer for it to release. So what I like to do is use my needle tool and kind of turn my banding wheel and just ride my needle tool <clears throat> around. 
and let the banding wheel kind of do, I'm kind of moving this down so you could see as I go, let the banding wheel do the work and then just come out. And what I'm gonna do is just remove this excess clay and you see how easy that is? Let me put that back up here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this off and just kind of lift my clay a little bit so it's not sticking and take my little sponge it's hiding over here it is so nice to be able to see both screens um i just put the names of my oh yeah see deanne it's it's a really good idea um now if you took on the front on the black side oops on the black side and used one of those like silver permanent markers and wrote your stuff um that would be a really good idea too because eventually this on the back side might come come off but by that time you should know what they're called right so i'm just going to kind of come around and get all these crumbs off the edge with my sponge and the banding wheel does a great job of doing the work for me um i need to get as you know, I come up to my son-in-law's shop to do this because my internet is not as good, but um, I need to get a work table up here that I could stand at because I typically stand when I work. And this is, let me move that out of the shadow. This is, is hard for me to sit and work, but it's probably better for me anyway. Okay, so I have that ready. What I want to do first is um, simply put a base coat on and let it dry. So I'm going to get that on. I am actually using um, Stroke and Coats Leap and Lizard for the background. Um, I'm going to cover the whole thing and then I'm going to sit and wait, um, which I should have done this early on because I hope we don't run out of time before this while this needs to dry. I use solo cups and pour it in. Ooh, that's fun trying to do that upside down. I pour it in a solo cup and uh, I can get into it better that way. And then just kind of go around with my banding wheel. And I'm gonna do a very light, light, thin, coat of stroke and coat leaping lizard on this because I need this to dry pretty quickly to be able to put the stencil on and show it to you. Now, if I were just working in my studio and I wasn't under a like a one hour time frame, I should have done this the minute we got on, um, what I would do is put two coats at least, but still a coat pretty thin and then another coat that's pretty thin. And what I would do is I would lift this up and put plastic underneath and let it sit on the plastic while the glaze is drying so that my slab isn't drying out. Um, so that's what I would do in the studio. Can I see Deb Garner? Gardner? Yes, I see you. Um, so when you get the hang of this Ecamm thing, it's pretty sweet, right? It's, it's going to be the same every week from now on. I think once you've done it once, I think when we go live next week, if you were here this week and you click the link, I think you're already in and good from this plate this time forward, but we will check that out next week. But don't you love the new format? I told you it was coming. We stepped it up. Okay, there is that. That is Leaping Lizard. And what I'm going to do is try not to hit this but I'm going to, I only brought one thing to do because I figured we'd be spending a lot of time um, getting everybody in. Hey, Diane, you're in. Yes, ma'am. 
<clears throat> so I'm just going to kind of, I should have brought a hair dryer for this. I was doing this the other day, trying to hurry, and I went funk right across the middle. But I have already done all the heavy work. Let me show you. So Luann had a question. Isn't there a control of some kind that would allow the labels or whatever writing is shown to be legible by the viewer? Um, are you talking about the writing on my template? Can you see that? Is that what you were talking about? That's just That was just my, um, my garbage writing on my template just to remind me of uh, what there is. Um, if that's what, yes. Okay, so if that was just a matter, Luann, of just because it's just my scribbly writing to remind myself, I just didn't hold it up into the camera. And of course it's writing, so it's gonna be backwards for you. Um, and like I said, when I go to point left, I'm actually pointing right. And yes, um, the glaze labels are also backwards and, um, I can't help that, but I am telling you what it is. It is leap and lizard and I will check into, yes, it's all backwards, which just like when I create stamps all the writing, I have to make the stamps backwards because otherwise the writing will be backwards. But I will, this is new to me as well. Um, so bear with me and I will do some research on that and see um, if I flipped my iPad next time, if that would make any difference. But I don't think so because I still think it's gonna be like looking in a mirror. But I'll check into that for sure. So while this is drying, and hopefully I can get this dry in time, what we're going to do tonight is simply, I'm putting this base coat, then I'm going to put the stencil down, and then I'm just going to put a color over the top and show you how gorgeous it is that easily. But I also want to show you, thanks Deb, I also want to show you how intricate you can get with this and um, go crazy. So what do you think of that? That is, that is um, a little more work than what we're going to do tonight, but um, I, uh, I cannot wait to see this fired. So put all new elements in the kiln, new relays, new thermocouple, and started a bisque fire with lots of heart pots, heart dishes. Um, and now my breaker keeps popping off. So tomorrow, got to run and get a breaker. Oh, no wonder I'm going the wrong direction. Tomorrow, got to run and get a breaker in order to do a glaze fire. And um, so I have a Facebook view. Well, I have several wows, but I do have somebody that's still just a Facebook viewer that said wow, our Facebook user. Um, there are instructions at the top if you can, if you want us to know who is commenting. Uh, yes. Okay, Catherine O'Hare. Um, speaking of, I dropped something in. Let me, um, if you go to the Ecamm link at the t very top and click on that and, cho and choose, um, continue with Facebook, it will put your name in your comments so that I know um, who you are that's doing the wow, but I'm assuming the wow was for that. And look at the shape of this. This is that happy flower, and I don't know if you can really see the shape in the bottom because of all the color, but that is, that has the happy flower form in there. This would look absolutely gorgeous though with octagon or round or hexagon. Um, and it might even go with the quirky. So it can go, you can put any, any middle that you would like. You're using a light coat. How many, okay. Normally I would do at least two. Um, and I would do light coats like this and let it dry more and then do another coat. Um, because remember, this is going to be, let me show you, this is going to be 
um, my background color on this one was yellow. And then I went around this afterwards, but my background color was yellow. And so not a whole lot of that is showing through um, once I get done glazing the rest of it. So a light coat, and look at this, it's drying pretty quickly. How much time do we have? Oh, we got time. Jean, yes, I can. Now, are you using, yes, I can, I can actually read. I forgot to tell you, have you seen this? I can read this in huge letters. I can actually read the comments. So now that I'm using raw clay prior to firing the first time, do you, and I only have do you, um, if there was a, a, another part, ah, do you fire the bisque coat and then, yes ma'am, that's exactly what I do. Now, this one, I'm actually covering the whole thing with um, glaze. But normally, or a lot of times, I'll just have my, my raw clay and then put the stencil on. So at, when I pull the stencil, um, all under the stencil is still, hi Catherine, I see you now. So under the stencil would still be the raw clay. And I personally like that um, somewhat of a gloss shine on all of it. So what I do is I do bisque fire once I've done this. And then I will dip it in clear, my clear of choice. My favorite is clear is Jessica's 2167. Um, if you make glazes from, you know, from the ingredients and, and you're okay with that, that's a great, hey Susan, that's a great um, clear glaze, zinc free. Um, otherwise there's commercial ones out there that you can brush, but Brushing on um, is great, but I have found just dipping them real quickly is faster for me. So I use that and then I will glaze fire. So let me keep this going. Any other questions? Vaughn? Uh-huh. I, I fire to cone five and uh, do a 10 minute hold. And it fires bright and beautiful. Now, when you do dip it in glaze or clear or put clear over it, it will, it can slightly mute the color slightly, but it's still bright and gorgeous, I find. And um, that 2167, if you get the thickness correct, um, it won't, cloud or anything it's bright and gorgeous and um if my kiln had finished and not popped breakers i would have had pieces with me tonight um to be able to show you straight from the bisque that were done like this and then i will dip them and glaze them and i do what i do is um wax my bottoms um cindy so i have an electric griddle and plug the hole and then I use paraffin wax and so what I would do let me move this out of the way a bit so let's say this was my electric griddle that had oh about that thick of wax melted in it so what I would do is I take my pot and I sit it in that griddle and kind of do this and lift it up and what that will do is put a perfect ring around the edge. By the way, can you see that? Can you see all the, the design on here? Forgot to tell you about that. So what I did while we're letting that dry, what I did was I took my stencil. Did, I, did you change your kiln elements? And now the kiln is popping. Yes. Uh, yes. But we have a bad breaker. You can hear the breaker hum, and the breaker is plenty um, high enough to support that kiln. So it's got to be, it was, it's an old breaker, so we'll go get a new breaker tomorrow. But what I did on the bottom of this was I rolled this very kind of heavily with my roller into the clay, and then I pulled it off, and then I turned it over, and so the backside actually has the design in here. 
It was all the way around, but when I actually made my pot and lightly sponged around here and took my rib and came around, I was very careful not to go on the top and just go around so I have a perfect border. And then I have this gorgeous design on the bottom of this dish. That is the happy flower. And it's very classy, very beautiful, and it goes with almost everything. You can tell how dirty it is. I use it a lot. So let's see. Let's see if we are, oh, look at that. So you can also tell there's a couple of shiny spots. We are almost ready um, to put the stencil on. And if we, well, it's, if we look like we're going to run out of time, um, I'll just sacrifice this and do it anyway, just to show you. Um, I'm going to do the top layer just in red, which is going to be Stroke and Coats Hot Tamale. Um, hot Tamale or Ilamat Top, if I say it backwards. Hot Tamale. Um, and then, so I'm going to take the hot tamale and go across the whole thing once I have the stencil on it. And then I'm going to take Stroke and Coats Tuxedo, which really is just black. And I'm going to do um, these little seeds. And, um, and, and that simple is still going to be gorgeous. Um, and that shows you how you can quickly make a beautiful dish with not a whole lot of effort, but if you have that in the three sizes or four sizes and did a nested set, I'm not gonna put a foot on this. I didn't put a foot on that other one because I did the design on the bottom. And they'll stack in, inside of each other and be gorgeous, gorgeous. <clears throat> no, stroke and coat is not really an underglaze. It is a glaze, um, but I also have used it as, as like an underglaze, I will put it on and wipe it off into my texture and it fires bright and glossy and I love it. Um, this is probably not quite ready, but remember that's just going to be where the stencil is. So if it slightly comes up, when it fires, don't do this, but when it fires, that glaze is going to level a little bit and probably hide that. But I'm, uh, I should have brought one that was already done or I should have done that right in the beginning instead of talked so much. Let's see, we don't even have any, um, oh, we do have one Facebook user still. You just pushed the design hard to make it come through. Yes, I did. Um, I don't know who asked that, um, but if you click the link, Misty? Is that Misty? Yeah. Misty, dear. If you go up to the top um, under the description, there's a link. If you click that link for Ecamm and, and it'll take you out, it'll ask you to continue with Facebook can, or log in with Facebook. It'll log you. You don't have to do anything. You come right back here, click the little X, depending on your phone, in the upper corner and it'll put you right back in here, but it will be showing me your name instead of calling you Facebook user. All right, this is still a little shiny, but we're running out of time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sacrifice this and I'm gonna put this on here and you see how gorgeous this fits, this template. And there, I'm just gonna put it right there. Now, I may make a mess um, I'm going to watch my roller to make sure I'm not picking up glaze because um, this really wasn't quite dry. Um, it's not as dry as I would have it. And remember, I would have taken this, this slab of clay. Oh my gosh, look at that. Just that is gorgeous. I would have taken this slab of clay and lifted it up and put it, set it down on a piece of plastic so that 
my clay doesn't get um, too firm so that when I make my pot out of it, it does not um, crack. And I haven't had, I haven't had any cracking doing this um, by putting it on plastic so that the bottom stays nice and moist enough. I mean, it does stiffen up some because you're not gonna stop that when you don't use it right away, but not enough to hurt anything as long as you don't leave it. Now, normally I just go right across here, but I'm being more careful because um, I am doing this while it was still somewhat wet and I don't want to pick the glaze up on my roller. Nancy, I do see your name. I'm seeing most names. I only have like two people that say Facebook user now. Uh, oh, if you're talking about the Stroke & Coat, this is Mako Stroke & Coat. Um, they actually call it Wonder Glaze. Um, it's not really an under glaze, but I guess they call it Wonder Glaze because you can kind of use it both ways. And um, it fires really nice, oops, nice and pretty and shiny. And um, I, I use a lot of it if I'm not using texture because it, um, it glazes so pretty, so, so bright. All right, that's probably good. What I would normally do would have let this dry a little longer so I could really roll that in. Uh, Misty, I do not, I don't see Misty's name. Um, I I, Misty, I don't see you yet. Now I'm going to come around. I want to make sure this edge is really pressed down so that my glaze does not go underneath it. I see you, Sherry. Woohoo! We're all getting in. Oopsie. Now that was wet and that came off on my roller, which is why I was doing it so gingerly. So I'm going to wipe that off. And I was done Anyway, so like my last roll. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just doing a two color with this because even just two colors, hey Christy. Um, well, Penny, you may see their names because you're in as Facebook. You're in Facebook. I, through Ecamm, don't see it unless you click that link. Um, so what I'm going to do here is clean my brush. What time do we have? Oh, 10 minutes. So we probably we won't be able to actually make this, but I'm going to show you on this other pot exactly what I did. Um, if I would have put this glaze on when we first got in, but I really, really wanted this to be as stress-free as possible for everybody getting you in through Ecamm because we will be using this from now on. So I used the hot tamale and I poured it into my red solo cup. Um, and I'm just gonna take this everywhere. I will post a link, I mean a link, I will post a picture of this um, in this group in the morning when it comes off the form and I pull the stencil. Um, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll, I will be impatient. Do not do this at home. Um, but I'll probably pull this stencil before we get off so that you can see. Um, I wouldn't have the patience to wait all night to see what it was actually going to look like. So I'm not doing a real heavy coat, um, because I want to pull this stencil. If I were at home. What I would do is a thin coat like this and get it all good. Remember, I rolled this down really good so this glaze isn't going to go underneath my stencil. And I do a coat like this. I would 
keep it, it would still be sitting on the plastic from when I did my base coat. And what I would do is this coat, kind of help it dry a little bit and then do another thin, um, thin coat. Right now though, I'm only gonna do this one coat and Yes, I do pull the stencil when the glaze gets, well, that's not true. You should pull, <laughs> you should pull the stencil when the glaze is dry. And how do you know it's dry? Because you see all this glossiness, it will go matte. When it goes matte, that's when it will be done. And what I would have done um, and planned to do was go around everything but the little dots but since we're running out of time, I just did the whole thing. It's still going to be gorgeous. And I would have put black in the dots. Now that I just went ahead and filled it all in, I probably won't. <laughs> Peggy, when I'm not rushing, <laughs> I wait until I see this glossiness go away, until it turns matte. Um, if you rewatch this video, the green base coat you will see that it was almost all matte before I started, before I put that stencil on. So it's the, the glossy goes away and the matte. The, the exact time is really gonna depend on your studio and your humidity and the, you know, is it winter, is it summer, is it, you know, humid, is it rainy and wet? But watch for it to go matte. Now, come with me and pretend this is matte because it's not but we're pretending that it's matte and hopefully I can get this off this early without running my glaze um, but I'm gonna do it just because um, I want you to see what this looks like and I'm gonna do it like pulling off a band-aid because I don't want this to run it's too wet you wouldn't have to do that um, if you let it go to a mat. But here we go. Here goes the band. -aid. Woo! How about that? Now, how about that for just gorgeous in itself? That is two colors, a base coat. Let it dry. Um, I could use a heat gun or a hair dryer, but you got to remember when you do that, you're also really drying out the top of your clay. Um, definitely, definitely have that sitting on plastic, but you know, it'll dry, it'll dry fine in, you know, 10, 15 minutes, uh, well, depending on your humidity, but, um, it, it, it still will. So what do you think of that? Hey, black and pink, this is going to fire hot red. That would even be pretty, right? So what about that? for very quick and gorgeous. This would be great, um, great. Okay, so now I'm gonna move this to the side because this is obviously super wet. Um, my assistant is not paying attention to me. I can see them all. Yeah, I'm watching them. In normal times, when do you put the third color on and how? Okay, in normal times, let me bring this back. Ooh. At home, what I would have done when I put this on is I would have taken my glaze and I would have glazed everything and just, okay, let me do this. Let me take this off here. And let me bring this one over. So what I did on this one was I used sun-kissed yellow and I did the whole thing. And then I put my stencil on and then I took little brushes like these. They're still not even cleaned out. So, and I did, I went and did um, all my leaves in the green and that was um, jaded, I believe, jaded. So I just, you know, took my little brushes. Here, here's a, here's a little brush took my little brushes and I did all the jadeds and I went through and did all of this and took it around and got them all and then 
I took and I did, this was um, hot tamale also. So then I did all of these in hot tamale. And again, I had not touched the centers at all. And I went around and did all of these because it's really only the base coat of yellow. And I used jaded and I used hot tamale. And so it was really only three colors. Then remember my stencils on and then I took tuxedo and I did all of the little dots because all you have to do is kind of go around like this and you can see I have some I have a little red on them but that's okay they're dots in a flower and I went around like that then what I did was I didn't think I was gonna like the fact that my background was yellow and that all of this was gonna be yellow because then it wouldn't show this as a yellow line so remember my stencil still on there so what i did was i took my sponge and i had this is yellow in the background and i took a little bit of the hot tamale and put on my sponge my sponge was wrung out really well and i dabbed it on like this all the way around so that it's going to be a different shade and it's going to have some of the yellow showing through I just dabbed it on all the way around, spun my dish, kept dabbing it on, because remember my stencil's right there, that's how I'm getting those crisp lines. And that was it. A base coat, three different colors, and sponged. And look at that, how gorgeous. Charlotte had a question. Um, do what? Stencils for bowls? Yes, stencils for bowls. What kind of bowls? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by for a bowl. Um, I have all kinds. You want a perfectly round bowl? I'm going to be doing berry bowls shortly. So here's what I did to finish this up since we only have a few minutes. So I took my clay. And it was sitting here, it was on a wear board and it was sitting here and pretend like this is flat. So I took my same shape, happy flower. Again, you can use any shape you want. And I just lined it up where I wanted it. Let me see if I can line this up where it was, ah, right here. So you line it up where you want it. And I set it on there. And again, that was flat. And so then what I did was I took, let me get this off of here. And I put a, a board on top and I flipped it. And after I flipped it, I take my sponge and have it, I mean, you can't even squeeze a drop out of it, right? It's, and so what I do is I just lightly go around with this damp sponge just enough to get it bendy because we've let it sit a while. So, and as I go, I put a little more pressure and a little more pressure so that the sides start going down. And then I take my red rib and I kind of, kind of on the rounded side, kind of bend it as like this. So as I come around or I'll take a corner like the edge here and come around like this. And as I keep coming around, remember I had put this design on the whole thing. Now that's gonna clear this and make a beautiful border. But as I come around, I'll start going, pressing just a little harder and a little harder so my sides drop down. And then what I would do, in fact, I put a little gouge in that one so I'm gonna fix it while we're at it. Um, so for the deep dish, that's going to work a little differently because here I can put the stencil in and cut the shape and use a, um, use a form that's slightly smaller that will fit over the top. The deep dish, you would have to do like say the 13 and a half inch template with a 13 and a half inch stencil and to use like the 
eight or maybe 10 inch deep dish because you would want that clay to be big enough to drape over the top of that whole, um, that whole deep dish. So um, you would still cut it out to shape first and do your stencil, but just remember, you're gonna have to go up quite a bit in size of the template and stencil for that deep dish because you have to go over several, you know, inches to get down. But yes, it would work. Um, Luann, wouldn't you do the stenciling first and then use whatever form to press? Yes, you could. That's what we just did. And I could have taken this form with foam and instead of flipping it over, I could have pressed it in, um, which when you press in, will take your, let me show you, let me flip this back over. It would be just like this. I would have it laying on my foam. I would take my form and press in. When you do that and you have excess, a lot of times it's not just gonna keep it flat like a plate, but it's gonna give it that gorgeous organic look, which would also look beautiful um, just as well. But I was just showing that this particular plate, I actually draped over and um, see how it's got the, flat or the um, straight edges instead of being all um, organic. Um, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do to the one we just did. We just won't have time to do it tonight, so I wanted to explain this. But um, I need to go to my next group. Thank you, Jean. These stencils are so fun. You can dress them up, dress them down, Make them simple, make them complex. I love them. Thank you guys for joining me um, and having the patience with this new software and everything. And um, e as each week goes, I'm sure I will find more um, like that. I could have put that right in the middle. Ha! Um, I will be finding more features as, as we go each week. But for now, I'm gonna say goodbye. And I will finish the one we did tonight and post a picture in the morning. Um, these stencils uh, are on the website already. Wow, see, another new thing. Those are on the website already, I believe. I did send, do publish. I'm pretty positive they're out there. But thank you guys, and I will see you next week, if not sooner. Good night.